Hi guys, I'm Dr. Tara Tobias. I want to welcome you all back to my channel. In today's home exercise tutorial, we're going to be going over something that was requested. I'm sure there are a lot of you out there that struggle with this. It's how to get out how to get in and out of bed. So there are several different ways to do this. Most people I would say that have mastered this use what I would call a compensatory strategy. So they basically learn how to use their stronger side to, to get in and out of bed. So to go from laying down to sitting and vice versa from sitting to laying down. So even if you can get in and out of bed, I highly recommend that you watch this video because what I'm going to show you today is what I call more of a facilitation strategy. So um, we're going to go over how to use a compensatory strategy, which means using your strong side. But I am also going to show the one that I prefer and that is more of a facilitation technique where you are actually learning how to involve your weaker side of your body in the activity. So you're going to be getting some weight bearing on your arm. You're going to be learning how to move the leg that is weaker, which is going to build body awareness. So like I said, even if you can already get in and out of bed on your own, I still think you're going to find a lot of value in watching this video today. And if you're new to my channel, real quick, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button before I get started. Click that notification bell. And now let's go ahead and get started. So the first strategy I'm gonna show you which is the easiest strategy to do if you're trying to do more of a facilitation technique. So if you're trying to do more of a normal movement pattern where you're involving the weaker side of your body, the easiest way to do this is actually to get up on your stronger side. You're less likely to resort to a compensatory strategy which we will go over where you just use your stronger side of your body to do the entire movement. Step one is always use a log roll technique. A log roll technique is where you roll onto your side before you sit up. A lot of people, whether you've suffered a neurologic injury or not, use a method where you just kind of sit straight up without going to your side. That can cause back pain and a whole variety of other issues. It is, it, and it's also harder. So it's, it's a harder technique to use. Rolling onto your side, once I do it with someone a couple of times, they really see how this is an easier way to do it. But also not rolling to your side is also kind of more of what I call a compensatory strategy. So step one is always roll to your side, whether you're rolling to your strong side or you're rolling to your weak side, and we're gonna go over both methods, um, always use a log roll technique. <clears throat> So in this first strategy, like I said, we're gonna go onto your strong side, so rolling onto your strong side. And the best way to do this is to first bend your knees up. And then the reason this is easier is because you can use your strong arm from this position to kind of grab onto the side of the bed or grab onto the mattress to actually help you roll. Always making sure to grab your involved arm <clears throat> just so that you know where it's at. A lot of times I see people that have some neglect they don't do this and their arm is actually way back behind them when they roll onto their strong side and that can really cause some shoulder damage. So always grab that arm, <clears throat> make sure it's in front of you where you can see it before you roll. But then you're gonna grab onto the side of the mattress or the bed and you're gonna roll onto your side and then because you're on your strong side, you can really just prop yourself up on your elbow and push up. Now, some people have a hard time. It's more of a body awareness thing than it really is a weakness, but they have a hard time propping themselves up on their elbow from this position. So an alternative method is to actually bring the arm all the way up so that it's underneath your head. And some people just find it easier to get up onto their elbow from this position. And then once you're up on your elbow, you wanna keep your knees and your hips flexed. You wanna stay in as much of a little ball as you can, and then you're just gonna push back up. So this is another area where everyone just tries to kind of keep their legs extended. I always tell everyone visualize a ball. The smaller the radius, the easier it's going to be to 
quote unquote roll up. So when you extend your legs out, it just makes it a lot harder to sit up. So make sure you're tucked up into kind of a tight ball and then you're just gonna push up into sitting. And then to do to the reverse of this, so to go from sitting to laying down, you're basically just gonna go back onto your elbow. You're gonna go back down onto your side. This is another time where people, instead of going onto their side, they just wanna go straight onto their back. And it really does put a lot of stress on your back. And it's really a harder technique to do, believe it or not. You're actually using a lot more energy to, to do this technique where you just throw your legs up on the bed. So go down onto your side. I call it kind of tucking up into the fetal position and then you're gonna roll onto your back. So that is what I would call more of a facilitation technique towards your strong side. So what is a compensatory technique towards your strong side? Well, a lot of people, what they do if they can't get their knees bent up and they don't roll onto their side or they can't roll under their side a compensatory strategy would be just to hook your leg underneath your leg you can either use your strong leg to bend the leg up and then roll that's still kind of a compensatory strategy if you don't need to use your stronger leg to bend your legs up i recommend you don't and you work on not doing that but <clears throat> If you need to use your strong leg to bend your legs up and then it's the same it's the same technique from here the other kind of compensatory strategy going towards your strong side is literally just to hook your strong leg underneath your weak leg always make sure you grab your arm and then just throw your legs off the bed and momentum will just kind of carry your upper body up the only reason i show you this is there's a balance between trying to facilitate and normalize movement and becoming independent and i think there's value in both i think mentally it's good to be able to do things on your own and not need help but there's also a ton of value and normalizing your movement patterns and not using a compensatory strategy. So if you're someone that just really desperately wants to be independent and <clears throat> you're not really concerned about normalizing your movement pattern, that's why I show you this other technique because at least you can find a method where you will be independent. So next we're gonna go on to doing this all onto your weaker side. This is definitely a lot harder. One, because of body awareness, you just don't have as good of body awareness on your involved side, but also it's weaker. So anytime you lay down onto that side, you're obviously not gonna have the strength in that arm to push yourself up. But here's what a facilitation technique would look like. And this would be the one that I would recommend the most. Even if it takes you longer, even if it's harder, this is truly a facilitation technique where you are involving your weak side, you are regaining body awareness on that side of your body, you're regaining, you're regaining strength on that side of your body, and you are giving your brain an opportunity to connect with this side of your body. So although this is the hardest technique, if you have the time and you have the patience, this is definitely the one I prefer. So going down is definitely the easiest. So we're gonna start with that. You're basically, once you're sitting, when you're sitting, we're gonna still go down onto your side in the fetal position, but you're gonna use your strong arm to just kind of get your weaker arm out and in position. You want to land kind of on the elbow. So if you were truly gonna facilitate, you would start with your arm extended and you would lower your body down onto your weaker elbow. If the arm is all the way up against your side, you're just gonna fall because you don't really have any leverage out there if that arm is not away from your body. So that's why you might need your stronger arm to just move that elbow or that arm out to the side a little bit. And then it's just, like we did on your on the other side you're just gonna curl up into the fetal position and just go down onto your side now again this is a place where a lot of people just want to throw their legs up because it's really hard to control your legs in this bent position sometimes but try and stay in that little tucked fetal position once you're on your side then you're just gonna roll onto your back so some people the only setup they have in their house they have to go down onto their weaker side so how do you get up going from laying down to sitting on your weak side again this is the hardest way to do it 
but again we are incorporating everything your arm your brain everything's having an opportunity to connect so again this would be my preferred method but you're gonna start on your back you're gonna tuck your knees up just like we've done in all the other methods if you need to use your stronger leg a little bit to help it along go ahead and do that <clears throat> Now, in this position, I recommend that you grab onto your hand, your weaker hand, before you roll onto your side. It really does just help to make sure, A, you know where that arm is, so you don't damage the shoulder, but just by holding the hand, it helps it to the arm to stay in a good position so that once you get onto your side, it's in a more efficient position to help you to push up to sitting. So you're gonna grab that hand, your knees are tucked up. You're going to roll onto your side. You're in that nice tight ball, so you're not going to stretch your legs out. You're going to keep them nice and flexed because, again, remember, if you keep that radius small, it's really going to make it easier to sit up. So then you're going to use your strong arm just like you did coming down. You almost want that weaker arm just away from your side a little bit, but you're going to try and use your strong arm just to get up onto that elbow so that you're propped on that elbow. And then if you can, you're going to position your strong arm on top of your weak arm. Now, again, I'm not saying this is easy, but I am saying that it's a great way to incorporate your strong side and start getting some movement back in that arm. Even if you can't push up, just go through the motions. And because your stronger arm is on top of that hand, you'll you could if you can't you don't have the strength in your weaker arm to do it. Your stronger arm is right there to help you, but you're still teaching that brain a normal movement pattern with that weaker arm. So yes, you're kind of going through the motions and you're still helping it with your stronger arm, but it is the best way to start making that connection with that arm and start building that awareness. Now, if your room is only set up to where you have to go down onto your weaker side, which does happen. I've had patients that had to learn this technique because it was just the only way that they could do it with the way that their room was set up. There is a compensatory strategy. So I am gonna show you that for those who just wanna be independent. Again, it is not my preferred method, but I am gonna show it to you. So basically what you do is you just hook your stronger leg under your weaker leg. So now we're gonna go from sitting to laying down. You're gonna hook that leg under, and then with your stronger leg, you're basically just gonna lift the weaker leg up onto the bed. And then if you have strong abs, you can just lay down from this position. Some people will kind of roll more to their stronger arm to use their strong arm to help lower them down. And then to come up using a compensatory strategy, you a lot of people, and I've probably learned these strategies more from just watching people. Unfortunately, it's what people resort to because they just want to be independent, but you really are just kind of telling your brain that you don't need that weaker side of your body. So again, it's not my preferred method. But to come back up, what people do a lot of times is they just roll onto their stronger side, kind of away from the edge of the bed, so going in the opposite direction that they need to to sit up. That gives them leverage on their stronger arm, and then they just push up to what we call like a long sitting position, so their legs are usually still up on the bed, but they're upright and then they just use their strong leg to either lift the weaker leg off the bed or they use it to just kind of push the weaker leg off the bed and there you go then they're up and sitting so just to review i showed you two different methods on <clears throat> to go from laying down to sitting and sitting to laying down on the stronger side i showed you one that's a more preferred method which is a facilitation technique. And then I did show you a compensatory technique. And then we did the same thing on the weaker side. I showed you a facilitation technique, which is harder, but is more the is my preferred method. And then I also showed you a compensatory strategy if you just really desperately need to be independent. <clears throat> and that is it. If you like these functional mobility 
tutorials, meaning I've done stairs, um, I've done sit to stand, how to get up out of a chair, and now I've done bed mobility. There's getting in and out of a shower, there's getting in and out of a car. If you like these types of videos, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments because I'll do more. I'll do getting in and out of a car, getting in and out of a shower. There's a lot of different what I call like functional mobility skills that are necessary to get through your day. So again, just leave that in the comments below. If you haven't noticed, if you look at the comments, I literally am creating videos directly from what you guys are requesting from the comments. So I do hear you and I am listening to you. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. If you haven't hit that notification bell, go ahead and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified of when I post new videos. And until next time, you all have a great day and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.